It's a beautiful morning here in the mountains of southern Appalachia where I live. The garden is just bursting with bounty. This is the garden. This is the time of the year that the garden is just going crazy and it's hard to actually keep up with all the harvesting and all the putting up that's going on. But this morning I'm going to walk you around the garden and show you how things are progressing. So this is our rattlesnake beans, and just like last year, they're just doing fantastic. You can see here some, there's one that definitely needs to be picked, and that one almost. And we've already been picking from them. We've already been canning beans. I love these that they're right outside my kitchen door, so I can run out here and grab a handful or two if I want to roast them for supper. They're especially good that way, although they're great in the traditional Appalachian way of cooking them for a long time, too. And Matt has been so impressed with them from last year and this year that he thinks we should gravitate towards growing more of them instead of right now we grow more greasy beans. But I've been reminding him the greasy beans um, were planted like a week and a half later than these, so let's give them time. And we've grown them for so long and they produce good too. It's just these rattlesnake beans, they really are impressive how much they put up, how uh, put out, and then how, you know, the beans are just lovely. They're just all large, good, full beans. Uh, and they're very tasty too. So maybe between now and next year, Matt may change my mind. I said at the very least we could try, we could swap, we could dry, grow greasy beans here in this little patch and then grow our rattlesnake beans in the large patch. Maybe, maybe we'll try that next year. So up here in our one terraced bed is where we have our tame blackberries. Um, we hope to have more terraced beds. We have a huge bank, runs the whole length of our yard, so we certainly could, but it's an arduous task, so we've not accomplished just that one so far. But it's been wonderful for our blackberries, and they've done so well this year. With blackberries, both tame and wild, it's some years are just bumper crops, and then some years not so much. But this year has been great for both. My tame berries have done wonderful. Uh, and the wild ones. I've been picking wild ones. I've got them around all around our house too and then also I've been going to other places to pick them. So this has been a great year for blackberries. And you often hear people say that they don't think the the tame ones taste as good, as bright, or as sharp, or as vibrant as the wild ones. And I don't, I don't necessarily think they do either, but I still think they're really good and they're really worth growing. Uh, they're, they're so much easier to pick. For one thing, so you don't have to worry about the briars getting you. And then also, um, they, their berries get so big. They're such bigger, larger, prettier berries. So, so I'm, I'm, I kind of like how we do it is that we have a mixture. So we have the tame ones, but then all the way around the back, back part of the yard into the front, along the edges of our, our yard, the wild ones grow. So I kind of get to enjoy both of them. Uh, and then around in the area, different places, I've been picking wild blackberries this year too. So a lot of people just don't, it, purist I guess, only want the wild ones, but I, I really love the tame ones too. My brother Steve has some and his has done very good this year too. This wonderful green alleyway that I'm squatting in right here is just thriving. On this side we have our cucumbers, I've got silver slicers and Arkansas, I believe it's Arkansas, is it Arkansas Traveler I think? Little cucumber, I grow them every year, it's Arkansas something, I think it is Traveler. And on this side is our melons, so we've got sugar babies, I've got my Minnesota midget uh, little cantaloupe like things and some others. Also some peppers in this bed and on the front side of the cucumbers I'll show you we have some other peppers. So the pe cucumbers have been doing so good. Last year we had a, um, a bout of powdery mildew but it's because we had like about two and a half weeks full of rain, straight rain with no sunshine. This year we've had much drier weather. Uh, in fact, dry to the point that we're kind of worried about the garden. But in the last week and a half, I would say, we've been getting, it's been back to our usual, uh, what is more normal for us, is, which is daily afternoon thunderstorms or thunder showers. So uh, the garden's really enjoying that. The melons are getting bigger and bigger. They're um, 
I can't wait to eat the first one. A lot of people have asked if we have to hold, once they start growing and hanging from the trellis, if we have to hold them up with something. Typically, we don't. Now, every once in a while, one will fall off, but they're smaller size um, melons, so by the time they get ripe, they usually, usually if they do fall, it's because they're ripe and they're ready to, to be eaten. So once they start falling off, I start looking for them and just taking them in and eating them. If you grew a really large watermelon, of course, you would have to figure out how to, how to give it some kind of support to make sure that it didn't fall off too early. As I squat here, <laughs> I'm thinking about, um, once I said squat down, I started thinking of how that's kind of in Appalachia. I think I've wrote about it on the Blind Pig and the Acorn. I know I have. I'll, I will uh, link to that so that you could go read it if you wanted to. But you would often see people squatting down. you got to remember, I mean, I'm talking about in the old days, not so much today, but that was like a real... Um, if you're if you're tired of standing but you can't sit down it was like a real art form i guess is what i'm trying to say people that could squat for long periods of times and uh, always makes me think of men mostly where maybe they were standing around outside and you would see two or three of them squatted down talking instead of instead of sitting on the ground or whatever um I, it's it's just an interesting thing to think about right here is a great place to squat of course if you had a had a group of friends and you were talking to them that would be wonderful too but i can like i said i'm surrounded by all this beauty and i can hear the bees are really working the cucumbers which is wonderful so i can hear that in the distance in the house not really far but i can hear a fiddle i hear katie she's playing the fiddle so uh, this is a pretty nice uh, nice place this morning to pop a squat for sure on this side of the cucumbers is where our peppers are, and you can see they are doing so good. So this is the earliest in the year that we've ever managed to actually produce peppers. Usually it's like in August. So you can see they're just hanging full. Time for me to make some pickles. Also to, uh, I wanna dry some. You can see down there on the very end, there's one just starting to turn. So that's what I'm kind of waiting on to see if those others will turn. But the way that we manage to grow them so or to produce so early we always have peppers growing by this time of the year but is by starting them inside under grow lights but instead of um i've tried that inside let's see winter before last and i but i left them in the basement where it just wasn't it was i had them under lights but it just wasn't warm enough somehow so this past year i started them upstairs in the living room under grow lights and that's how how we got such a jump on the on the production factor. So this is the back side of the melons. More peppers back here. Here's some uh, cayennes that Matt's really happy about. And then you can see the, the melons. That one, that may be my first sugar baby that I get to eat. It's the largest for sure. More peppers out through there. And some volunteer tomatoes that I've just, I just left. It looks like it's a sun gold is what I would guess. So on this end, kind of parallel to the greenhouse and the two green stalks is our potatoes. And you can see some of them are beginning to die back. So they're, they're ready to, to dig, to pull up and dig. Some of them are still going strong, but we, we planted them at different times. So that makes sense. Over by the door of the greenhouse, I've had those two pots of calendula and I've so enjoyed those being right there. Um, they've done really good probably do better if they were in a bigger pot but still they've just been a real bright spot right there between the two green stalks near the um, greenhouse door and the green stalks the one with uh, strawberries is still going strong the one from last year the other one that I planted strawberries in they did really good for a while and then I guess that dry weather or I don't know what got them but a lot of them died so I've been taken from the green stalk that's still really doing good. And um, when it the strawberry plants in it have their little tendrils or little shoots and then replanting them in the other green stalk that didn't do as good. So hopefully, hopefully they'll take. 
So this is behind the greenhouse and we've never planted anything back here until this year. This is our first year. I had a video where I talked about making new ground. Well, this was our clearing our new ground was back behind the greenhouse. And we planted mostly winter, or all we planted was winter squash and melons. And the winter squash is really doing good. You can see how giant those are down there. At my feet right here, there's a bigger one that's actually climbing up the green stalk. It's almost halfway up it. Uh, the melons, which Matt tried to tell me not to plant, they're still really, really small. So I don't know if they'll, if they'll end up to, to do anything or not, but they've certainly got a whole lot of growing to do if they want to catch up with the winter squash. One other thing I put back here so that it would be out of the way this year is my litchi tomato. I only planted two this year. So that's like a uh, more of a fruit than actually a tomato. But the reason I put it back here, why no one wanted me to put it in the front like I did last year, is because it has horrible thorns all over it. Everything has thorns from the leaves to the stems to the actual little pod that the fruit's in. Um, so it, every time you walk by it, it would reach out and grab you just like a, a blackberry briar or saw briar would. So I put them back here, but none of them are ripe yet. I really didn't like them. The first ones I ate last year in the beginning of the summer and I thought, or I mean when they first started getting ripe, wasn't the beginning of the summer, it was on up in the summer. And I thought, well, I'll never grow those again, but it was fun to try. But then by the end of the summer, when I would go by and eat one, I, I really liked it. I don't know if they got better or if I just got to where I was used to the taste of it. I don't know, but it's one that I like, but I did put it back here out of the way so that, so that the family wouldn't get stuck. So our Cherokee purple tomatoes are just now starting to get ripe. Oh, so glorious to be able to come out here and get one, make a great tomato sandwich with. But they're just now beginning to get ripe. The, that lack of rain was kind of putting some stress on them, but now that we've got more rain in the last several days, I'm hoping there'll be another flush of tomatoes, but right now they're hanging full. There's plenty of fruit on them. And I wanted you to notice this one, if you can notice that right there, there's kind of like a little cavity in that one. It's healed over. It's not seepy or moldy or squishy or anything. Well, when you grow your own food, that's what happens. Uh, it doesn't look like, like if you looked up in the dictionary, looked up a tomato and it would have that, have a pic, if it had a picture, it would have that perfect red tomato with green on top. When you grow your own food, it doesn't always look like that. Sometimes it does. There's a few around that one that look really pretty. But that one, uh, and it often happens with heirloom varieties too. There's another one right there I see. But as long as those weird looking cavities, as long as they kind of scab over, um, it's fine to just still eat it, cut that part out. Like if you're canning, I would cut that part out. I'd cut it out if I was eating it, if I was gonna make a sandwich with it or, or chop it up for a salad, but it's still a good tomato. It's just that the food you grow, when you really grow your own food, you begin to realize it doesn't look like what you see in the grocery store. And that's really a good thing because it may not be perfect like that one, you have to cut that little part out, but the flavor and the goodness, the vitamins, knowing that where it come from, what you've put on it, what you've not put on it, all that uh, is worth it being a little, little strange looking with a weird cavity. I'm so glad that I planted the nasturtiums at the end of some of my beds. They are so lovely. This one's still really looking beautiful. Some of my others are beginning to kind of die back. I need to cut them back and let them have another flush of, of growth come out. But this one is a lovely, lovely peach color, you can see. And the leaves, since it rained last night, you can see the, the leaves have those wonderful drops on them that looks almost like diamonds, just sparkling. And these are edible. So when you eat them, especially the leaves, they have a, a, a wonderful, like a, like a peppery bite, almost like a radish, but kind of a floral hint too. They're really good, especially to spice up a salad. Look at that leaf. It's got some kind of variegated thing going on. Isn't that pretty? Nasturtiums are also, if you don't have a, a garden to plant them in, they're also really especially pretty in a pot because of that kind of flow in nature that they have. And the leaves are just so pretty. So these are my Mississippi pink eye peas. I've never planted them before. I'm really excited to try them. You can see they're not, they're just beginning to fill out now. They've got lots of blooms on them. So I can't wait to see how how I like them, I think I will. And they've grown really well. Even in this heat and the dry, the dry weather that we've had, they've just been 
been really growing every day and I can't wait to try the first peas. In this tomato bed down here where we have tomatoes, these are our Arkansas Traveler and our Mountain Princess. And that reminds me, the cucumber is Arkansas Little Leaf, not Traveler, the tomatoes Traveler. So they're doing well. It's funny the, the row behind them has got ripe faster than this row in front. This part of the yard always smells especially wonderful this time of the year because of all the wild flocks that grows around it. You can see it goes all the way down through there. Some of it's infiltrated my flower beds, but I just leave it because it's so pretty. So in this part of the garden, this is where we've got our greasy beans. So there's two long rows of greasy beans. Also, uh, some other beans there at the bottom, the Cherokee trail bean I planted, which is just now beginning to get close enough to start climbing. And then also one Grammy bean, that's what I'm calling it, sent to me by a subscriber that had been passed down in his family. And then we have squash, and then we have zucchini on that end. And then kind of in between, we have our okri and peanut beans. The okri, I should be eating, if not today, by the end of today or tomorrow. Uh, certainly by the end of this week, it will start coming in. And it's just doing great. It's so tall. Everything in this bed is doing good. There was one or two squash plants and one or, or well, just one mound of squash and one mound of zucchini that didn't come up. So I've replanted them, kind of thinking... Um, I mean, I waited to replant them. I just replanted them in the last few days so that they can kind of be a succession um, plant, you know, so we'll continue to have squash and zucchini throughout the rest of the summer. I'm excited about the okri because I love it. Uh, my favorite variety of okri to grow is Jing Orange, which is a red, red variety. And I usually plant some of, I think it's called Granddaddy's, which is just a green one, but kind of one that's smoother on the outside. This year, last year I tried, I planted it, it didn't come up, but I, it's growing this year is one called Silver Queen. We love Silver Queen corn as our favorite corn. So I had to try the, I've got me a friend here. I had to try the um, Silver Queen Oakery to see if it was as good as the Silver Queen corn. So I'll be really excited to try that. So in this part of the garden, this is where we had a lot of our spring stuff. And once that had been eaten up or, or died out, uh, we went back and replanted some other things. So I have some Yonts bean, which is a really old bush bean that's been passed down in my county, in a family in my county for generations. And then we actually planted two little rows of it. Now, the day we were planting it, I had several different little packs of seeds I'd saved, you know, I save them every year. And one of them looked kind of pitiful, but I wanted to get rid of them. I wanted to sow them anyway. So we sowed one row of the good looking beans and one with the kind of pitiful shriveled up looking ones. Well, the, I shouldn't have that one that was uh, the bad looking beans. They didn't one come up in that whole row. So I went back and planted, um, I was planting other peanut beans in another area of the yard and I just went some more succession planting of peanut beans. So I went back and, and that last row will be one yonce beans and peanut beans. Also in this area, the one spring thing that's left, there's a few onions hanging on. And then also uh, carrots. I haven't grown, ever been able to grow carrots that looked like this. I've not pulled one up to see if it's actually a carrot on the bottom or if it's just all foliage, but at least I've accomplished that. I've never been able to grow carrots, but I started them super, super early, um, and, and that seemed to have worked for me. Well, while I was saying that, I thought, well, silly, why don't you go pull one up and see if it did? So I grew carrots. Wow. Yay. Yay for me.
the first time ever and they're pretty good looking carrots i can't wait to taste them so i, I guess i've been kind of afraid to pull one of them up and see because i thought well i grew the foliage that's just like achievement now if i don't grow the carrot you know it's going to be no good but i grew the carrot too well, now that I know they actually, I actually grew carrots, I need to pull the rest of them up and then that'll be another little short row that I can put some, um, something else. I think I'll go back to my good yance bean seeds and plant another row of yance beans. So this is our cabbage and it's time to uncover it and see how it actually did. And I'm kind of terrified that it didn't do very good. I know it didn't do as good as it did last year, I don't think, because of the place it's in. Now, I would have put it in the same place, but we've been scheduled to get high-speed internet for over a year now. And the way they had it marked where the line would go, our power runs is underground, so they were going to run it that way, and it comes from my brother's house. So that was the way they flagged it. Well, it would have went right through the middle of this. It would have went right through the middle of our beans, too. But I figured that was, you know, you wouldn't have had to uncover. If we'd planted the cabbage, they would have had to uncover this, or I would have had to. So we put it down here. Uh, instead, they didn't go that way at all. They come up the driveway. So I did that for nothing, but that's okay. I still don't have my internet though. I'm anxious, anxiously awaiting, but still don't have it yet. But so I don't think it did as good down here for a couple of reasons. For one, I could see the plants growing and the ones on this end really were growing great. The ones on that end, not so much, which makes no sense because it's kind of in the same area. And we used compost throughout it when we planted them. Also, because it in this area is so close to my flowers, they're really bad to um, to kind of spread out. So you can I can see clearly that there's all kinds of stuff growing in there with the cabbage. On the other end of the garden, it's more cleared out with no flowers nearby, more bare ground, uh, with no I don't know. It's just not as prone to weeds and flowers growing up in it. So that has me worried. But it's the time of the year that we've got to pull it out and see what happened but i'm not going to do that today another weird thing that happened and maybe it is because of those plants and because of it being closer to where people get in and out of the cars and stuff uh, the row cover did not hold up as good as it did last year so i see a hole right there some of the holes i tried to tape up but like that's one i've missed so i'm not sure how how much it protected the cabbage from the uh, worms that we were trying to keep off of it so I will just have to wait and see. It'll be like a, a mystery to unveil it and then hopefully find enough cabbage in it to make some kraut with. So again, this part of the garden was part of my spring stuff. I still have a little bit of lettuce hanging on. I'm just letting it grow. Uh, it's actually, I mean, we're still eating it. It's still edible. You can certainly eat it. And I've been feeding some to the chickens as well. My beets are here. I need to harvest them. That's on my list of things to do. I need to harvest the beets and make some pickles. Um, and then I'm, I hope this will be the place where I put my turnips, my fall turnips. I'm going to do that down here this year. And then I have one row of butter beans, butter peas that I, I found when our freezer died and I've got them planted and then they come up pretty good. They didn't all come up. And then when I was replanting some of the peanut beans, I planted some of those down here in the spaces in the, um, beets there where there's, there's a little bit of space where beets didn't come up or either died out. And I also planted some bush cucumbers down here to try to prolong my cucumbers. But they've none of those have come up yet. So behind me, going all the way down through there, kind of starts right here in front of the camera where you can't see. That sea of green is our winter squash. It's, we've got candy roasters. We've got green and white striped cushaws. We've got butternuts. We've got pumpkins, Chambers Creek, and some of the new pumpkins that I was trying out. Um, and also some melons and in in between all that the ground cherries have seeded themselves so they're coming up in it too if you watch my videos you may remember in one of them i told matt he better move his trailer because it was going to be overtook well he didn't move it so i don't think he can he can't get it out i hope we don't need it because i don't think he can get it out without damaging stuff now he's just gonna have to wait uh, until cool weather to get it out but they are all doing really good you can peer down in there and see some uh, see the little squash and candy roasters growing and butternuts, uh, the green and white cushaw, they're the ones that get so big. Uh, I've seen a lot of those growing. I've seen a few little melons growing. I have not seen a pumpkin yet, so I'm hoping that they're just kind of uh, going a little bit slower because I definitely want some pumpkins, but I've not seen one of them in there. But it's such a large uh, mess that they may be hiding in there somewhere. 
back in there behind all that along the back we had some garlic uh, that we've harvested and then also some onions i planted the egyptian walking onions back there and they are beginning to do their little walking thing so as you can see uh, kind of the the onion grows up and then as the instead of having a bloom on top like most onions it, it just creates another little place and little tiny bulbs grow and then as the plant gets heavy and falls over those those bulbs will replant themselves hence as that happens over and over and over you can see why they would be called walking onions so all in all the garden's doing really good this year i think it's one of the prettiest gardens we've ever had i'm not sure why maybe it's because i've been able to be closer to it uh, now that i'm not working outside of the home um, I don't know if that's it or if it's that all of the years of our hard work and, uh, you know, enriching the soil has finally paid off in a big way. Or maybe the weather was perfect this year. We didn't have near as much rain, uh, which while we were dry, it was almost better than the years that we've been so very wet that nothing could grow. So for whatever reason, I do think it's one of the prettiest gardens we've had. Right now is that time when it's just it's bursting with the bounty. I mean, just absolutely bursting. It's funny when you pay attention to the way of the, the land that where you live, especially in a place like this where I love to live in the mountains of Appalachia for many reasons, but one of the reasons is because of those four distinct seasons that we have. So when you really pay attention to them, even summer, you think, okay, well, there's summer. Well, there's different stages of summer. And, you know, it, there's that very beginning kind of in June, end of May maybe, but kind of the first of June when things are just warm and everything's thriving and everything looks so bright and beautiful. And then as it goes on into the end of June, into July, like it is now, everything is just so lush and so bountiful, whether it's the wild blackberries, uh, the fruit trees that are brimming with fruit, or your garden, or just the, just the woods, if you look around me, they're just, you know, like the wild flocks, but also the trees, they're just so lush and um, hanging full of their beautiful summer coats, just, just beautiful, just so many different things you can see. Just after that comes kind of the wildness of summer. Right now it's like all in check and beautiful, but in another week or two it'll get to this wildness to where it's just almost just crazy, bizarre, how lush and overripe almost. It's almost like it's overripe and you know it can't last and it doesn't. <laughs> after that wildness comes kind of the dying of summer where things start to decay, your garden starts to die back, uh, the leaves begin to take on kind of a little rusty look around the edges. Um, they go through that period before they turn into those wonderful, beautiful, uh, amazing fall garments that they put on. But there's those, those different stages if you pay attention. And right now we're in that beautiful, bountiful, lush, but not overripe uh, part of summer here in the mountains of Appalachia. And it's just a glorious time for sure. So I hope you enjoyed walking around my garden with me. I hope that you'll leave me a comment and tell me how your garden's doing if you make a garden like we do. And as always, I hope you'll just keep dropping back by to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of trying to live close to the land, trying to pay attention to those times of the year, how the how the different uh, seasons progress, and also making a garden and enjoying the bounty that it provides.